Here we're going to look at a nice nonlinear system of equations. We want to solve it over the real numbers. So the first equation is x minus 1 times y minus 1 times z minus 1 equals x, y, z minus 1. And then the second one is x minus 2 times y minus 2 times z minus 2 equals x, y, z minus 2. There are a couple of hints built into the wording of this problem. First, we want to notice there are three variables but only two equations. And that means there must be some sort of trick in order for there to be only one solution here. But I want to be very careful to say that a priori we don't know there is only one solution. There could be zero solutions or infinitely many solutions. It just turns out that the fact is that usually with problems like this there is only one solution. So that means we should keep our eye out for a trick that somehow reduces this system so that there's only one obvious solution. Okay, so let's maybe jump into this, starting with this red dot equation. So I'm gonna multiply out the left-hand side and see what we get. So we'll get x, y, z. That'll be from x times y times z. And then next we'll have minus x, y plus x, z plus y, z. So that's from taking one copy of the negative one and then two copies of each, of each variable. Okay, and then we'll have plus x plus y plus z and then minus one. That's what we get for the rest of that multiplication. So notice here we've got something going on with these symmetric polynomials. So we won't use directly the fact that these are symmetric polynomials, but I think that's interesting. Okay, and then over here on the other side of the equation, we have x, y, z minus one. And now we can start to do some simplification. So notice we've got x, y, z cancels our x, y, z. And then furthermore, this negative one will cancel this negative one. And then we can move some stuff around there to see that we've got this equality between the quadratic symmetric polynomial and the linear symmetric polynomial. In fact, we know that x plus y plus z is equal to xy plus xz plus yz, like that. Okay, now let's dive into the other equation, which I've called blue dot to see if we can use what we found in the red dot equation to get some sort of further relationship between x, y, and z. So we'll multiply this out pretty much the same way. We'll have x, y, z minus two x, y plus x, z plus y, z. So that comes from taking one of the copies of negative two and then two of the variables and then we'll have plus 4x plus y plus z minus 8 is equal to x, y, z minus 2, like that. Okay, so now let's start simplifying things. So let's notice that this x, y, z will most definitely cancel with this x, y, z. We can take this negative 8 and move it over, and that's going to scrub this down into a 6. We've got 8 minus 2. Okay. And then from here, we can take this quadratic thing and replace it with our linear thing. So here we have this is x plus y plus z. And we got that from the red equation. So let's see what we've got. We've got 4x plus y plus z minus 2x plus y plus z equals 6. So in other words, we have 2x plus y plus z equals 6 because 4 minus 2 is 2. And then that tells us that x plus y plus z equals 3. In other words, z is equal to 3 minus x minus y. And this is actually going to be pretty helpful to have this relationship between z and x and y. Okay, so from here, we will plug in this fact, which I'll square in yellow, and this fact, which is already squared in green, into our equation up here, which we got from the red dot. So notice that will give us 3 equals, 
Well, we're going to have xy, and then notice xz can be rewritten as x times 3 minus x minus y, because that's what z is. And then yz can be written as y, and then 3 minus x minus y. Again, that's because that's what z is. Okay, great. So now where can we go from here? Well, maybe we need to simplify out this right-hand side. So notice we'll have xy, and then actually we'll have minus a copy of xy, so that will cancel, leaving us with 3x minus x squared for these first two terms. Again, the xy and the xy canceled, and then we have plus 3y, and then minus xy minus y squared. Okay, great. So now notice we can write this as a quadratic equation where we are viewing y as a variable and then x is like a constant. So let's see if we can do that. We'll have y squared. So let's moving that over here. And then let's move the co things with coefficient y over here as well. So that'll be plus x minus 3 times y. So that'll be from these terms right here. And then plus x minus 3x plus 3. That'll be moving from that stuff over there. So notice we've got this quadratic equation. We're viewing y as the variable and x as just the coefficients. Okay, so let's bring this data to the top and then we can start finishing it off. So on the last board, we used our information over here to gain the following two quit equations relating x, y, and z. First, we have x plus y plus z is 3. And the next, we have this quadratic equation where we are viewing y as the variable and x part of the coefficients. Now let's apply the quadratic formula to this second equation that we have right here. So that means we need y is equal to 3 minus x plus or minus the square root of, well, notice that that's like our negative b term, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that'll be x minus 3 quantity squared, and then minus 4 times a times c, so that's going to be minus 4 times this times 1. So that's minus 4x squared plus 12x and then minus 12. I went ahead and I distributed the four through to this. Okay, and that's all over two. So that's how we can write y exactly in terms of x. So it looks like perhaps we have infinitely many solutions because we could take x as like a free variable at this point. So we're still on the hunt for that trick that would reduce this to one solution if this trick exists. Okay, so now let's simplify the interior of this radical. Notice we'll have x squared minus 6x plus 9 for this, and then minus 4x squared plus 12x minus 12. Okay, so that means we can do some simplification. So we've got 3 minus x plus minus the square root of, well, let's check it out. We've got x squared minus 4x squared. That's negative 3x squared. We have negative 6x plus 12x. That's going to be plus 6x. And then finally, we have 9 minus 12. That is negative 3. Then this is all over 2. Now we can almost finish this off. Let's notice that this guy right here will simplify to negative 3 times x minus 1 quantity squared. But notice that x minus 1 quantity squared is always bigger than or equal to 0, whereas negative 3, well, that's trivially less than 0. But if you've got something bigger than or equal to 0 times something less than 0, that means the whole thing is less than or equal to 0. But that's in, a, in the radical. And we're trying to solve over the real numbers. So that means we're not allowed to have negatives under the square root, which means this thing in the interior of the square root must be equal to 0. But that only occurs when x is equal to 1. Okay, but then throwing that value of x back up here, let's see what we get. If x is equal to 1, then that means this whole thing cancels to 0. 
And then we're left with three minus one over two, that's two over two, which is one, so that means y is also one. But now going way back up here, we see that one plus one plus z is equal to three, which tells us that z is equal to one. So in the end, we do have a single solution, like we kind of guessed over here, and it's one, one, one. And that's a good place to stop.